Navy SEALs. Navy SARKs. Two of the United States Navy's most elite warriors. Which one do you want to be? What are the differences? Similarities? Let's take a dive into all there is to know about Navy SEALs and Navy SARKs. We'll start off with the SEALs. SEAL stands for Sea, Air, and Land. They have arguably the world's most difficult military training at BUDS, which stands for Basic Underwater Demolition Training. Their pipeline is around 18 months. They fall under Special Operations Command, or SOCOM. They are both enlisted and officers. They have an extremely high attrition rate and are widely popular in American culture. Now, onto the SARKs. SARK stands for Special Amphibious Reconnaissance Corpsman. Their training pipeline is roughly two to three years. They can be embedded with Recon, MARSOC, or Dev Group. They are enlisted only. SARKs are medical professionals having attended the 18 Delta course, otherwise known as SOCOM. Their pipeline has a high attrition rate, and they are widely unknown. All right, you just saw their pipelines. Now we're gonna go over how to even get your foot in the door for each of them. The physical test that SEAL and SARC candidates perform is the PST, which is short for Physical Screening Test. It contains a 500-yard swim, max push-ups in 2 minutes, max sit-ups in 2 minutes, max pull-ups, and a mile and a half run. Both SEALs and SARCs require the same minimum scores, coming in at a 1230 swim, 50 push-ups and sit-ups, 10 pull-ups, and a 1030 run. Of course, the minimums will not get you into the pipeline and you'll have to shoot for competitive numbers. For enlisted Navy SEALs, you can join as a civilian through the Navy's Warrior Challenge Program or cross right into training if you are already active duty. It is way easier for candidates to get a shot at BUDS as a civilian, so if your plan is to join the Navy first, then go to BUDS later, we don't recommend it. There are way less billets for fleet returnees than there are for new accessions, and your year group, the year you join the Navy, may be closed out or limited, leaving you in a situation where it doesn't matter how good of a candidate you are, bureaucracy and admin stuff prevents you from even getting a shot. If you're trying to be a Navy SEAL officer, you can go to OCS, NROTC, or through the Naval Academy. Most officer candidates come from the Academy, and the least come from OCS. All officer candidates have to attend SOAS, previously called MINIBUDS, which stands for SEAL Officer Assessment and Selection. It is three weeks long and designed to see who is fit to actually attend BUDS as an officer. It's even possible to make it through SOAS but not be selected, as you go through a board to see if your team worthy to even go to BUDS. Also take note, officer candidates are expected to have better PST scores than their enlisted candidate counterparts. While you may get an enlisted contract with slightly worse PST scores than officer candidates, aim to get the best scores possible. A good resource to see what scores you need and how you compare to other candidates is the PST calculator on the SealSwick.com website. Go give it a look, we'll leave a link to it in the description. Now, to get into the Sark pipeline, there's a few different routes. You can be a corpsman in the fleet and put in a package, you can cross right into the corpsman rating and attend the pipeline, or you can go through the new Street to Fleet program, where civilians can get an opportunity to attend one of the corpsman's three special programs. It's called an HMATF contract, where the ATF stands for Advanced Technical Field. We have a video that discusses the Street to Fleet program in detail, and we're just scratching the surface here. Go give it a look. The link is in the description. Since the Street to Fleet program has started, the Navy has decreased their billets for fleet returnees to attend SARC training, as it is cheaper for them to send entry-level trainees through the pipeline. This doesn't mean it is impossible to get a shot if you're already a corpsman or in the Navy. Just understand that your opportunity is more limited than it was a few years ago. It will also be difficult at this time to cross rate into the corpsman rating as they are currently trying to shrink the size of the rate, but anything is possible and stuff changes all the time. To know exactly what they need from you in order to submit a package, we recommend you comb through the official Navy instruction on becoming a SARC. We will leave a link to it in our description. It is a must see. Lastly, if you're active duty and you're interested in getting into the SEAL or SARC pipelines, give the Navy NPC pages for each respective community a look to see if any updates that the enlisted community managers give. They also have an OCM page for the Navy SEAL officer candidates. 
help give you a quick snapshot of what is going on with the HM and SO ratings. You don't need to be in the military to check this information out. It is open to the public. We'll leave the links to all of these in the description. Navy SEAL training is very well known and highly talked about, with an entire Discovery documentary being produced about it with Bud's Class 234. This has led to people who aren't even interested in joining the Navy to know about how difficult and strenuous Navy SEAL training is. Not only that, but there are even TV shows dedicated to Navy SEALs. If we asked you how much you know about SAR training, would you be able to answer? Maybe if you watched our How to Become a Navy SARC video, you might. Navy SARCs are not as renowned and have just started to get some limelight. The majority of their pipeline isn't discussed much, with the only thing being produced was from surviving the cut on BRC back in the day and hard to find clips talking about Sockham and the like. In fact, the Sark pipeline is a relatively new concept as for a while a lot of them were homegrown within their units. Because of this, not only are Sarks rare, they are under the shadows of military special operations. Now that we've discussed with you a quick breakdown of SEALs and SARCs, we're going to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of their respective pipelines. For the Navy SEALs, Navy Boot Camp in Great Lakes, Illinois, 8 weeks. NSW Prep in Great Lakes, Illinois, 8 weeks. BUDS Orientation in Coronado, California, 3 weeks. BUDS in Coronado, California, 6 months. SEAL Qualification Training, SQT, mainly in Coronado, California, six months. Now onto the Sarks. Navy Boot Camp in Great Lakes, Illinois, eight weeks. Hospital Corpsman A School in San Antonio, Texas, 14 weeks. Field Medical Training Battalion, or FMTB, in Camp Pendleton, California, or Camp Johnson, North Carolina, eight weeks. We have a video discussing FMTB in more detail. If you want to give it a look, the link is in the description. RTAP, Recon Training and Assessment Program, formerly known as BRPC, 5 weeks. Basic Reconnaissance Course, or BRC, in Camp Pendleton, California, 13 weeks. We have a video series that breaks down each phase in detail. Make sure to give that video a look, link is in the description. Special Operations Combat Medic Course, or 18 Delta, in Fort Bragg, North Carolina, roughly 12 months. We have a video discussing SOCOM in detail, make sure to give it a look. That link is also in the description. Marine Combatant Dive School in Panama City Beach, Florida, 8 weeks. We have a video discussing this one in detail as well. If you're motivated and a hard charger, make sure to give that one a look too. Dive Medicine Course in Panama City Beach, Florida, 5 weeks. U.S. Army Airborne Jump School, 3 weeks. We have a video that breaks this down in detail too. Go give it a look please. Now that we've gone over their pipelines, let's briefly go over opportunities for each of them. As an enlisted SEAL, you have the opportunity to go to several different schools that will sharpen and broaden your skills in warfighting. These schools include, but are not limited to, Breacher School, Sniper School, Advanced Demolition, Medical Courses like Special Operations Tactical Medical Course, some SEALs are lucky enough to go to Sockham, Foreign Language Schools, Diving Supervisor, Advanced Driving School, JTAC, and much more. If you decide to go the officer route, your options are more limited compared to your enlisted counterparts as officers have a slightly different purpose and possess other responsibilities. As a SARC, you still have opportunities to advance your skills, but your options are more limited compared to your SEAL counterparts because SARCs are corpsmen first. Therefore, their medical expertise and training will always come first. They are limited to what their commands are willing to send them to. Some examples are additional medical courses, mountaineering, breaching, foreign language schools, coxswain, tactical driving course, and sniper school on a very rare basis. Keep in mind, just because a SEAL has finished their initial training does not mean that they are running and gunning right away. They typically train for another year and a half after they receive their trident before they are fully deployable. The same goes with SARCs. Depending on their unit's deployment rotation or schedule, they will continue to train up and sharpen their skills before they deploy. Deployments for both of these will vary depending on a multitude of current world events and where the higher-ups decide to send people. Where will you be stationed? SEAL teams are placed on the west and east coast, Virginia and Southern California, respectively, with odd teams on the west coast and even teams on the east coast. They have a reservist unit and there are two SEAL delivery vehicle or SDV teams, one in Hawaii, the other being in Virginia. 
Sarks are either stationed with Recon or Marsoc, and rarely with Dev Crew. With 1st MSA moving over to Lejeune, any Sark with Marsoc will be stationed in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and there are also opportunities to be stationed in Camp Pendleton, Hawaii, or Japan with Recon Battalions. In conclusion, SEALs and SARKs are both highly trained operators, but they come with a different purpose and mission set. While both are trained in diving, demolition, parachuting, and most things that come with being a special operator, they are two different entities. SEALs are SEALs first, and their specialty second. SARKs are medical support first, and anything else is extra. To put it in perspective, a SEAL that goes through 18 Delta may be a special operations medic, but a SARC is an independent duty corpsman that will live, eat, and breathe medicine for their entire career, whereas the 18 Delta SEAL has his qualification just as a collateral duty. SEALs, even if they go to Sockham, only attend the short course, whereas all SARCs go through the long course. SEALs have more opportunities to learn combat-related skill sets, and SARCs have more opportunities to expand their medical capabilities. At the end of the day, both of them are are lethal and important assets in naval special warfare and operations. Well, that's the down and dirty of Navy SEALs and Navy SARCs. We discuss their pipelines, their capabilities, their training, and who and what they are. Now the real question is, which one do you want to be? Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. All your friends are subscribing to General Discharge and you don't even want to be here.